Thank you for joining us as we present another Spirit-filled message by RCCG ICC UK, the home of kings and priests. Please grab your Bible, notepad and your pen as you're about to listen to this transformational message. God bless you. This, this morning, there's a very important message and it's, it's, it feels weighty in my spirit, you know, because I realize that this is so important and it's following up from last week. And if I can just ask you, okay, two things, okay, I'm going to begin with um, the media, it's, it's in the news today. How many of you are avid news readers? Okay. Okay. Not many people. It's important that we must read the news. We must follow the news on a regular basis. Okay. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 62, it says, I have placed watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem, who would give me no rest. Okay. Until I have made Jerusalem the praise of the whole earth. Okay. Um, and and it, the reason being that you can't be... Let, let me go let me step back a little bit in genesis okay god gave man a mandate gave him authority to effectively take responsibility for the earth god said to him tend it guard it keep it okay now one of the most important things that you need to be able to exercise responsibility or duty in any place is information okay if you're poorly informed, then you will be poor in your execution of your task. So information is still the number one commodity today. Whether in governance, in government, a government that lacks information cannot execute its responsibility. You know, as a parent, you need information. You need knowledge. You need information. There's a principle that follows. It says it's the people say wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, but that's not the sequence. The sequence is knowledge first, understanding, and then wisdom. If you don't have knowledge, you can't have understanding. Okay. So the first thing is information, and you need that information in order to be able to carry out a task or be able to act responsibly, intelligently, you know, and accurately. You need those, okay? Media, so Dami, make sure that the um, keys and nuggets that I'm, that I'm saying, you guys are taking them down and then running them under, okay? Hallelujah. Okay, so it's important in every field, in every field of life, you need information. You need knowledge. Information feeds knowledge. If you don't have information, then you can't have knowledge, Okay, so it's important that you constantly be aware. Now, you cannot be a watchman. You cannot be an intercessor. You cannot take responsibility for something you have no knowledge of. You know? Before you can do anything, okay, you first of all need information. And, and the reason I'm saying this is that we as Christians, okay, if we're going to pray, if we're going to be those who God has said to us, occupy until I return, then what you must be keen to do must be to watch and what pray. You must be able to know what is happening. JJ, where is JJ? Yeah? Keep, keep an eye on the sound. On you know, Okay, all right. So it's important that you're able to keep an eye on, on what's going on around you. You must be alert. So the Bible says, watch and what pray. It is what you see that will determine whether you will pray. If you can't see, what are you praying about? If you're not alert, how would you know what to do? You know, so it's important to be alert, to be able to watch, to be able to see. And governments spend millions, billions on gathering information. In warfare, information gathering is the key to success. And is biblical. In Kings, we see something, okay, more so in Second Kings, 
we see the story of whereby even God uses divine intelligence. The Bible says that whenever the um, Assyrian kings will plot what they're going to do, okay, God will give the information to the prophet of God who will quickly notify the king of Israel and let him know this is what they plan to do. And the kings of Israel will quickly position themselves in order to be able to intercept what plans they had. After a while, the king, the Assyrian king became a concern. He said, what is going on here? There must be a spy in our midst. You know, everybody knows across the globe, okay, the CIA, the um, MI6, the all FSB, everywhere in the world, governments invest millions and billions into information about what's happening around them. All the tech companies, it's information that they sell. You know, that's the key thing. Because they're constantly harvesting information about your life. You know, somebody said, who knows what algorithms are? Anybody understand how algorithms work? Pardon? How? How, what, what, how do they work? Where is Mr. Uluwalaim? He has gone out. Just because I said algorithms. Yes. Quickly. Okay. The reason I'm asking it yeah, is, have you noticed on YouTube or on the internet, you search for one thing. Yeah. Okay. And also, by the time you go back again, they're sending you information along the lines of things that you searched for the last time. Okay, because there are people who are working at the background using what you used to search for to now begin to send you information. They're tracking you, how you use your computer to, and so on. Am I making sense? Who understands what I'm talking about? Yeah, okay. Now, in that process, they're advertising things. They begin to send you stuff. They begin to, when you click, um, I agree, or whatever it is, all of a sudden, you begin to get all sorts of information being sent. If you open YouTube and you search for one thing, Okay, then you now see the next time you come back, based on your last search, they now begin to send you and recommend things to you. That's why you have to be careful what you search for. Okay, it is well. Um, <laughs> but 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 the principle is this. Okay, that that organizations that are there, all that they, they do is to gather information and sell that information. Okay. Now, I'm bringing up this point, okay, because the, can you put that, the, the news for today? This is, this is today's news, Sky News, okay, quickly, thank you very much, okay. Every morning as believers, okay, um, as you read your Bible, open to the news, okay, put on your phones, okay? Let's try an activity. How many of you have mobile phones, smartphones? How many people have? You do. Let me see it. Let me see it. Okay? Let me see your, let me see your, your smartphones, okay? All right, do something smart with your smartphone, okay? Go to BBC and put um, alerts, Okay? Go to Sky News. Put, let it alert you when important thing comes. Okay? Not only when news from Umudim or um, <laughs> is coming. Okay? Then put CNN, whatever one you want to put. Yeah? Put alert. So when key information comes up, it would alert you to that information. Okay? All right? It's a very useful tool. Okay, because it will come up and it will show you this is happening, this is happening, this is happening around you. Okay, um, my people perish for lack of what? Knowledge. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's go, so let's look at this Adam Bolton. What's, what's the news saying? Can you enlarge that? Is there any way to enlarge it? Okay. Okay, it says, quitter politicians, an impossible job, or the wrong people. Okay, and Jadami, is there any way to, 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 to make it bigger so that we can see it? Thank you. Praise God. Okay, so it talks about, it says, 
what the heading, okay, remove the add stuff and so on. Yeah. Um, I don't know how you're going to do that, but that's your. Okay. Um, okay. Whatever it is, fine. I think that's because you probably it's not a paid for Google. Um, but anyway, let's let's move. Otherwise, I keep on sending you adverts and so on. I'm sure God can help us to afford the one without adverts. Okay, it says Adam Bolt, a quitter politicians, an impossible job or the wrong people at the wrong time. Okay, scroll. It says the quality of those seeking to govern is what? Diminishing. That, that in turn breeds what? Disrespect for politicians, which makes the job less appealing than ever. Okay? Um, then... It shows, let's see that picture. Who are, the, who are the people who are shown here? Nicholas Sturgeon. Yeah, Varadaka or whatever his name is. Okay, and then that is Jacinta or something like that, isn't it? Okay, of New Zealand. Okay, now let's scroll, let's scroll. Okay, it says, there goes, there goes another one. The Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadka. Okay, announced this week that he's quitting at the age of what? 45. Explaining, I don't feel I'm the best person for that job anymore. He's just the latest in a spate of national leaders to stand down, okay, voluntarily, when seemingly at the peak of their powers. Last year, New Zealand's former Prime Minister Jacinda um, Ardern found she had no more in the tank. Aged what? 43. Nicola Sturgeon went at 53 to spend a little bit more time on Nicola Sturgeon, the human being. So who was it that was in power before? Okay, all right. Okay. Since, first being, since being first minister of Scotland takes its toll on you. Okay. Next, it talks about... Um, Politicians at the very top are not the only ones calling an early end to their careers, okay? It says the number of MPs standing down from the Commons has now reached what? 100 and counting, okay? That is what might be expected ahead of a likely change, uh, uh, ahead of a likely change election when the opposition is poised to take over from incumbents. A major cause for concern is a comparatively young age of many of those giving up and quitting so soon. Yeah, I want you to really note that last statement. Okay, and then it now goes on to say, from resigning prime ministers to departing MPs, some something must be going wrong if politics only holds such a passing attraction for people of talent. Maybe the jobs of the leaders and people's representatives are more impossible than they have ever been in, this, in the social media age, or perhaps the wrong people are going into politics at the wrong time, okay? It says they are quitters, not what? Fighters, okay? Then it says, poster child um, almost seems an apt description of some of those joining the exodus from Westminster. Nicola Richards, 29, um, Mahari, um, Mahari Black, 29, William Rag, 36, and Dina, is, it, is, that, is that correct? Dahina Davidson, 30. It says, most of the MPs going prematurely have only known one government in their time at the Westminster. The majority of those standing down have only been MPs since 2010 at the earliest. More than a dozen were first elected in 2017 and 2019. It says the prospect of imminent actual defeat has of course concentrated the minds of those handing in their parliamentary passes voluntarily. Two out of three who announced they're not standing again are conservatives. Okay. Then it, this picture shows and it says, and it says higher up the food chain, um, Varad Dhaka, Adam Sturgeon were praised at first for going in their own time for, not, for no particular reason. It soon became apparent they were in adverse circumstances. Okay? 
But let me just pause there for a second, okay? One of the things that God began to show me from this passage, okay, is that you ask yourself, how come people who are in these positions and all the different individuals, okay, almost any little pressure, they just quit. And the question for us is this. As the question they've asked there, is it that it's the wrong jobs or is it the situation or is it the wrong people? Now, however you want to ask or answer the question, we can see clearly that there is a problem. And shall I say, saints of God, the problem is not in government. Because government has always been there. Let me tell you where I believe the problem is. The problem is from the home. And it brings us back to the important, there, was, there were ten points or several points, okay, that I shared with us last week. Okay, media, okay. What are those points? Last week, or the last couple of weeks, I've been dealing with the principle of what? Preparation. Okay, and that's what I want to focus on even further. And I've tried to leave this subject of preparation, but the Holy Spirit keeps on bringing me back to it. Amen. Okay. So, we're dealing with the subject, we talked about a, a attributes of a powerful woman, but I, I kept on emphasizing that it's more than just about a powerful woman, but if she's a powerful woman, she must even have a more powerful what? Man beside her. Are we together? Okay. You can't be a weak man and you're looking for a powerful woman. Yeah. In fact, no woman who has sense who is a powerful woman, will happily tie herself with a weak man. You know? So when we look at this, last week we began to look at Proverbs, okay? About the role of mothers, but also the role of parents as a whole. Okay? And I believe that in this generation, this is something that is so critical. Okay? And we, we learned... You know that her a, a woman, a powerful woman, a woman who truly understands her dom domain of influence, okay, is a woman who is perceptive, okay. She is perceptive. The word perception is not just to be able to see what is physical in front of you, but able to what see beyond the physical. To be able to see beyond the physical. You're able to see things and you're able to sense things without even immediate tangible data. But you sense that this is what is about to happen. Okay? And the purpose of perception or um, the second or, or higher level of intelligence, okay, is to be able to anticipate things and put the necessary things in place to be able to respond effectively to them okay and so the bible tells us okay about and we looked at rebecca and there's several women in the in, in the bible i recommended a book last week okay i keep on recommending books okay because the truth of the matter is that the bible tells us that daniel said you know he says because he understood from the books Okay, he now was able to immediately begin to intercede on behalf of Israel as a nation. Okay, if you do not read, the Bible says, show yourself, study to show yourself approved. A workman, not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Where is that scripture? Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. Okay, all right. It says, study to show, so you need to study to show yourself approved. You can't. For anything, let me, let me tell you the truth. Any job you're doing that does not require you to study is a nonsense job. That's the truth. 
any job that you're doing that does not require you to study, require you to learn, and he said, no education, no experience needed. Some people say, ah, that's the one I like. That's, that's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ah, that means no, no stress. You know, no, but it shouldn't be. Now, the 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 the, the value of the work you do will also determine the level of study that is required. Do you know that? The more the the greater weight and value that is placed upon that job in that society will also determine how many years of study that will be placed into it. You know. And so it's important for you and I to understand this. And so when, when, when the, the, the Bible says that the book I recommended last week was about every woman in the Bible. Because if you look at those books, you begin to see there are many things in there. It looks at different women in the Bible, why they were successful, the ones that failed, why did they fail, what were the issues. And for every woman, if you're going to be successful and also raise successful children you know some 144 speaks about our children shall be as sculptured pillars and our sons as cedars of lebanon okay do you know do you know what that scripture is referring to sculptured pillars and cedars of lebanon do you know where they're found they're found in palaces okay they're found in palaces Sculptured pillars are found in palaces. Go to Caesar's palace, okay? And where is Caesar's palace again? Uncle, America, you should know. Where is, where is Caesar's palace? Ah. Are you sure you're American? Let me see your passport. You didn't bring it. It's a lie. It's not at home. <laughs> Caesar's palace is where? Las Vegas, okay, all the great boxing matches and all the great whatever happened there, okay, all right. So, if you go to great palaces, you'll find sculptured pillars and they use cedars of Lebanon to put things up in those places. So, it says, Our daughters shall be as what sculptured pillars and our sons as cedars of Lebanon, okay. And those two things are there is a lot of it takes great craftsmen. To, to, to sculpture, to craft those sort of sculptured pillars. They're not just, and it's speaking of beauty and strength. Sculptured what? Pillars. Okay? Cedars of Lebanon are used to be able to support incredible, you know, that's, they're found in places that magnificence and places that you want to be around for a long time. So they would import them. They were actually imported for the building of Solomon's temple and his palace. Are we together in this? Yeah. But look, it says, our children shall be. Which means that somebody, okay. It says, when our sons shall be as plants grown large. That, that's okay. It says, and our daughters sculptured corner pillars, hewn like those of a palace. Okay. All right. In, 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 in some other translation, it uses shall be as cedars of Lebanon. Okay? Now, the, the point there is that somebody must take their time to sculpture it. It's not just what you just throw out there. You know? But the work involves, it, it requires craftsmen. Jolade, are we together? Amen. Okay? It involves craftsmen, but also strong strength. Craft and strength. And that is what is required in raising such children. You need wisdom. You need craft. Okay? But you also need strength to also create such sculptures. Okay? All right? Now, let, let me go on with this. Um, that's why I said to you, read these books and study and you will learn from there. Okay? Everybody tell me this is a lie. If you want to hide something from a black man, where do you put it? Is it, I say it's a lie. Put it where? <laughs> you know. But unfortunately, it's sad today. Let me say, let me tell you one thing, yeah. Okay. Our people, we just want somebody to do the work for us. You just pray for me. Just anoint me with oil. Just give me a miracle, you know. 
And, and because of that, there is so much ignorance in our communities and our societies, you know, that, that the devil is, run, is doing a better job in churches than he's even doing outside in the pubs because there's a spirit of deception among our people, you know. And that's why I say to us in church, when we come here, open your Bible, check it. Is what the, what the man of God, let me say, no matter who you are, eh, all of us are fallible. Okay, and many churches make lazy or wicked um, pastors. You know why? Because the pastor knows they won't check anything, so he can just tell them any rubbish. They just say, "Amen." Oh, no, no. Oh, amen. What did he say? <laughs> you don't know, but he just say, "Amen." So we like all the energy, um, but we're not. We're not really listening. We're not really paying attention, and that's why the Berean Christian Bible said they will go home and check whether what Paul. The apostle was preaching was consistent with the word. So as you're hearing it, check it. Be checking. Be checking. Read. Study to show yourself approved. And equip your children. Amen. Okay. So number two, we said that she is a woman who is able to point. That is give direction. Okay. Envision and direct her children. Okay. She's a woman who plans, who strategizes. Okay. She's a woman who is able to what? prepare her, her home, train and equip. Okay. And last week we learned that the woman, Lemuel's mother, you know, she was, she was someone who was able to give him counsel, advice, and it takes great mothers to raise great kings. Are we together? But it also takes Okay, great parents, great mothers to also be able to raise queens for the palaces. And, and it's important that you must every day, one of the, the heart of what God was saying to me that where are you preparing your children for? Are you preparing them for palaces or are you preparing them for the dumps? Because if you are, if you have the vision of the palace, then you would equip and prepare your children for the palace. Now, if you're preparing for the palace to stand before kings, who are you training them to stand before? Who are you preparing them every day to stand before? Where you have no vision of the palace or you have no vision of the throne room, you will not make any investment. The truth is, many of us just, our vision does not surpass where we are. But let me tell you, good parenting must always see beyond yourself. You must desire that your children will go further, go higher, be stronger, achieve more, accomplish more. But that cannot happen accidentally. Let me tell you, success is never accidental. Whatever you find that has no, that doesn't require any investment from you, you will lose it as quickly as you found it. You know? And for many of these individuals, as we see here, okay, they've gone in there, they've just done, after a while, they're quitting. Because, you see, as part of raising children, I, because for us, we train, I train as a social worker, but the, I'm not talking to you now about social work. I'm talking about, to you about parenting. Yeah? One of the greatest assets you can build into your children is the ability to be resilient. Teaching them resilience. Staying with it. Stick with it. Persevere with it. Endure with it. I know it is tough, but you will not be a quitter. Developing that indefatigable spirit on the inside of them. That you know what? I no, nobody's saying that we're wishing away the, the difficulties. No. I acknowledge that it's difficult, but you're gonna stick with it. Let, let me tell you one of the things I did, okay, for JJ, my son, okay. I I, I insisted on a couple of things, okay? One, I went to, I, when I read that learning how to play the violin, okay, is a very difficult skill. It's not easy. It requires discipline. You know, 
there's some things that you can enjoy quickly and so on and so forth. But when I began to read and understand things around the violin, things around the flute, I consciously, he didn't want to do them. Let me, you see this flute, where is, let me see a flute. Find me, find me a flute. There must be a flute somewhere. Okay. How many of us show a picture of a flute? Yeah. Do you know that people play flute and faint? As small as that instrument is. Yeah? You'll be trying to play it. Let me, I wish. Can, can I? Pardon? It's in the car. Yeah. Okay. So. It, it, it's, you see, in my house, we don't talk much. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> as small as it is, I, it, I will call you. Don't worry, we shall wash it. I'll call you. Eh? Come and try and blow it. When you start blowing, you start feeling dizzy. You, you, because, because just trying to blow it and get air into it, eh, your brain will be losing oxygen. As small as that thing is. And it meant that you have to learn. It's a tough discipline. You know what? They will have to. Part of the training is that you will lie down on the ground. They will put books on your stomach. Eh, and be adding the weight gradually. Okay? And then you must learn to control your breath. In such a way that you don't finish your breath before. It is tough. Even let me say, till today I can't play that thing. I thought it would be very easy. But there is a lot of work and discipline involved. And I deliberately made him to learn it. Not because it's a flute, but because of the discipline, perseverance, and endurance that comes with it. The same thing with the violin. You know what? It requires a lot of discipline and so on. It is one instrument he does not like. You know why? Because it requires concentration. It requires. Have you seen that it's largely in orchestras? Oibo people. I like to do those things. You know, if you're somebody who just wants to enjoy, just wants to, do, it can't work. It's a high level of discipline involved in playing that instrument like that and so on. Have you ever seen at orchestras, you see them, everybody's sitting, everybody's like that and so on and so forth and they're watching. The level of discipline, if you, you see, and it's because there's a transferable skill involved in it. I insisted you will learn it. it. How many times has he played here? No. But guess what? It is those disciplines that makes him disciplined in other areas. Stick with it. You will stay with it. If you faint, we shall pour water on you. We shall revive you. But you will learn how to do it. Because you will need that same discipline in other areas of life. You know? Because in today's world, almost in everything, any little pressure, gone. From jobs, to relationships, to everything. I'm not cut out for this. I can't take this. You know? Go and check how HR departments, eh? the number of sick. Where's Pastor Nicole? Yeah? Is, is that. Oh yeah, what are you talking about? Come, come, come and tell us. Yeah? And the absences, all sorts of, you know, the, the, it's like, it's rampant. There was one that Pastor Nicole was telling me about yesterday, you know. Please, where's Pastor Nicole? Yeah. What was that? I didn't mention anybody's name. Okay, what was going on? Come and whisper in my ear quickly. I will know how to say it. It's not you that said it. Uh -huh. Quickly, quickly, quickly. <laughs> okay all right two weeks ago i said one thing the highest prescription drugs in the uk are for what i sent it out for what stress and anxiety 
every little thing. <sighs> I, I'm feeling stressed. I, my mental health. My Our parents didn't know what that was. She would carry one on her back, carry two in the belly, and be pushing another one. Eh? And we still know that she has to get to work. You know? And I, I spoke with Sister Tino yesterday. Okay? Um, as I was coming back from a conference I went to, I was having a very bad headache. Eh? It, it, my head was knocking, bing, 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 bing. And I know that it's not my mother-in-law because she's a good woman, you know? So I, <laughs> I, I, I decided to drive into Tesco, okay? You know, the petrol station, whatever. I got there. I, I said, can I have, I want one Nurofen, one um, paracetamol, um, ibuprofen, four pounds. Ah, paracetamol almost two pounds i said in the one pound shop here you can get three for the, for one pound do you know what i received healing straight away my 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 headache left you know i i and i didn't pray i no prayer just the price that i saw i i just i just got healed i just i just all of a sudden i just felt the hand of god upon my head on my <laughs> You know, you know, I, I was fine. I just, I said to Sister Tino, God healed me, man, straight away. I said, because I can't understand why. By the time, no, 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 it was, but do you know what I'm saying? This, eh? Some, you see, for a lot of us as black folks, let's be honest. Eh? We don't, there are some things we don't suffer. Because who will be there to carry you? You know? Your children just suffer and die for your rent. You, your, you. So because of that, no matter what's happening, you just be healed. And I, and I said to her, I now know why you find a lot of healing miracles in Africa. Because you can't afford the medication. The main thing, if you can't afford certain things, eh, you will just be healed and just be, you'll be okay. With certain things. But when people know that they can easily quit and receive benefits of one thing after the other, or somebody will be there to take care of things, somebody will be there to take care of, all of a sudden, you know what? Quitting becomes easy. You know? And, and, and it's important that we must raise children who have resilience. You know, in the natural sense, MMR, what is the purpose of MMR? Okay, they're vaccines, isn't it? Okay, that you use to help children to develop immunity to mumps, measles, and what? Rubella, isn't it? Okay, and, and just as those vaccines are given, it normally causes children to feel, they tell you to give them a bit of calpol, isn't it? They need that so that when those same diseases, do you know that those things haven't necessarily disappeared? Thank you, darling. Yeah, They haven't necessarily disappeared. But because they have received the vaccination for it. Are we together? Yeah, Because they have received the vaccination for it. Therefore, when those same challenges come, their body has developed the immunity to be able to what, fight it and resist it. And it's important that there is a preparation. We must have this mentality that you must... Build in preparation for the inevitabilities of life. On Friday night, I talked about the importance of recognizing that in this world, there will be what? Challenges. There will be difficulties. You know what? Even if you're born again, eh, it does not, it does not um, excuse or, 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 or exclude you from those. Things. In fact, the Bible tells that because you are, you are more likely to have those challenges. The Bible says the rain falls both on who? The righteous and who? The wicked. The Bible says in, in Job chapter 5, listen, it says, Man is born to trouble as sparks fly upwards. So also is man born to trouble. Trouble is a fact of life. Whether you're born again or you're born against, it doesn't matter. Whoever you are. So if these are inevitabilities of life, 
Okay? Let me say this. Whether you're Christian or not, there will be times when you experience failures in your life. There will be times when you will stumble. There will be times when you will trip over. Things will not work the way you plan. Even if you pray from now to tomorrow, it will not exclude you from certain challenges of life. Even the Bible warns us that marriage itself comes with what? Many afflictions and troubles. So even if you marry Prince Harry or Prince William, okay, it, is, it does not what? Exclude you. No matter who it is you're married to, the best man in the world will come with his own package of problems. The best woman in the world will come with their own challenges. You know? Well, because we have been, we have been taught and we have learned, we have been vaccinated, and that vaccination begins where? At home, in childhood. I know how many times JJ wanted to quit and leave St. Edward's. Is it because initially it was because they're uh, bullying him? Because they're what? Let me ask you a question. Do you find bullies at every level of life? From school to the workplace, you will find bullies. Is it every subject at school you like? No. But you know what? You must endure and give yourself to it, including maths and English. You know? And you keep with it. And you train. No, no, no. You will go back there and you will carry on. Because tomorrow, if you don't, if, if God doesn't allow you to face the lion and the bear, what will you do when Goliath shows up? And Goliath could be the man in your bedroom. Hello? It's true. You know, so we train them with resilience and teach them how to stand, you know, in the courts of kings. So the Bible tells us, watch this, go back to, um, turn with, it says, yeah, Job chapter 5. Verse 6 and 7. For affliction comes not from the dust, neither does trouble spring forth from the ground, but man is born to trouble as sparks and flames fly upwards. Okay? Trouble is a fact of life. Problems are a fact of life. In this world, you will face many challenges. In fact, the Bible tells us that the way into great opportunities is what? Met with what? Great what? Adversity. The way into the kingdom, Acts chapter 14, verse 22. Okay, are we listening? Acts 14, 22. It says, it is through many troubles and afflictions that we shall enter into the kingdom of God. So when you think that because I got saved, I gave my life to Christ, I got born again, and I, I pay my tithe, because of that, everything will be okay, no more problems. One is self-deceived. So, what do parents do? Okay. All right, through many hardships and tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. Okay, what must great parents do? Great parents must equip, must learn to prepare their children for the inevitables of life in order to be able to enter into their Canaan land, in order to be able to enter and stand before kings. You must train them for where you desire for them to be. So the Bible tells us quickly, Daniel chapter 1. Pastor Pami, you'll come and finish this message now. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 1, give me from verse 3. Okay, quickly. What does it say? And the Babylonian king told who? Aspenaz, the master of his eunuchs, to bring in some of the children of Israel, both of the royal family and of nobility. Next. Quickly, it says, well, youths without blemish, well favored in appearance and skillful in all wisdom, discernment and understanding, apt in what? Learning. Apt in doing what? Learning. What does the word apt mean? Quick, apt, from aptitude, okay? It, not just quick, but willing to learn, quick to learn, okay? Apt in learning, knowledge, competent to stand and where? 
serve in king's palaces and to teach them the literature and the language of the Chaldeans. It says, and the king assigned them a daily portion of his own rich and dainty food and of wine, which he drank. They were to be so educated, so nourished for how many years that at the end, what will happen? They might be able to what? Stand, okay, and serve before the king. Hallelujah. Because the king wanted to be able to see them in his courts, he said, go and train them for three years. Esther, before she could appear before the king, she was required to undergo training eh, of protocol approach everything even how to smell how to uh, present yourself how to package how to walk how to approach for 12 months she was being equipped before that she was undergoing what training in Mordecai's house she was taught tact she was taught how to enter and approach the king in times of crisis. I don't have enough time to go through. By now you should have gone to Esther for me. Okay. All right. But watch this. Most people. Everybody is good when the weather is good. It is your bit. So you see. It is, the Bible says in the last days. There will be perilous times. Hard to bear. Okay, and, and, and difficult times require those who have been what? Well prepared for them. People who have been well drilled. How many of you tell your children life is going to be tough? Yeah? How many of you tell your children that there will be much adversity to come? How many of you tell your children that you will fall many times but the Lord will cause you to rise up? Because the Bible says that a righteous man what? Four, seven times. But the Lord lifts him up. How many of you tell your children that you know what? You will fail in certain stages of life. How many of you tell them? You know, we don't like to tell them those sort of things. Because you say, ah, you're saying negative to a child. But you must prepare them and let them know that in, there will be times in life when you will experience some losses and some failures. But you must be able to what? Get up on your feet. Stand up. Brush yourself. It is not the end of the world. You pick up yourself, clean up, and you go again. And you try again. And you keep on trying until you succeed. That you experienced a fall does not make you a failure. Let me tell you who a failure is. You know who it is? It's the one that stopped trying and gave up and quit. Dami, quickly go to my pasty. No. Quickly go to my office on my board. Bring that slogan. Quickly, quickly, you know what it is. It's not an option. Hallelujah. Pasty is just 16 years old, so that's what I'm saying. He's able to, he does exactly what I'm asking for. Okay, Church of God, I'm bringing this thing because I'm believing God that we shall raise the, the Dream Center, okay, hear this, is a youth development and leadership training center. Right now, Jesus, before he left, he taught his disciples about the challenges to come. He prepared them for the hardships that are meant to come. And that is why there were people who never quit and were able to turn. You're a Christian today because those 12 men, apart from Mr. Judas, did not pack it in. After they were beaten with many blows, flogged and told that they must never mention the jail, you know what? They got up again, picked themselves up and kept on going. And it's vital. Give it to, yeah, give it to them. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, JJ, pause. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Very good. Okay, okay, give. Okay, bring it. Auntie Dami has it. Yeah, take a picture of this. Take a good picture. Okay, of it. 
Okay? And it's something... Thank you, Pastor. Where is it? Oh, no, don't worry. It's, it's the same thing, isn't it? The same thing. Can I, yeah. I put this... I said to Pastor, go to my office in front of... Do you know, I put it in front of me. Yeah? No matter what I'm doing, every time I walk into that office, I'm seeing it. It is speaking to me. Okay? Ego was laughing. He said somebody came into the church and said, every time I come here, there's always something going. You're always changing, fixing, carrying, sorting out, painting. What ah, is that? You know why? Because mediocrity is what? You know, progress will always cause you to keep on developing and changing. You can't stand still if you're progressive. Mediocre people, as we find it, so it is in Jesus' name. Amen. Being average. The Bible says you shall be the head and not what? The tail. Above and not what? Beneath. First and not what? Last. Okay. It says quitting is what? Is what? On what? Unthinkable. It is not in our syllabus. Hello. You just became a yuppie elder again. Amen. Praise God. Can you imagine midway through she says I'm tired. I'm not doing any more. Hello. What am I talking about? A woman who is in labor. She just says I'm tired. I'm not doing any more. And she calls her. Let's go. What happens to her and the baby? Both. Okay. So oh, put, put the black and white one. Yeah, okay. It says what? Well, failure is what? There are MCQ. What's MCQ? Multiple choice what? Question. Which also gives you multiple choice what? Answers. One of the answers of life is that what? Failure is not there. Failure simply means you've quit. And then it says what? The pursuit of excellence in all things at all times is our goal. Be the best you can be. Go beyond. Be perfect even as your heavenly father is perfect. Now I'm, I'm going to pause here. Okay. Because one of the fundamental things. Okay. In the Proverbs 31 woman. Okay. Is that the Bible says that her house is not afraid of things whether of seasons, of winter, or snow, or whatever it may be. Could you put it, Proverbs 31 from verse 10, okay? And we're going to end with this, okay? I want you to look at the nature of this person, okay? Let's read together. A what? Capable, intelligent, and what? Virtuous woman. Who is he who can find her? She is far more precious than jewels. Her value is far above rubies and pearls. The heart of her husband trusts in her confidently and relies on and believes in her what securely so that he has no lack of what honest gain or need of what dishonest spoil. Another day we'll look at that. Next it says she comforts, encourages and does him only good as long as there is life within her. Next one, it says she seeks out wool and flax and works with what? Willing hands to what? Develop it. Next, it says what? She is like, a mer she is like the merchant ships loaded with what? Foodstuffs. She brings her household's food from what? A far country. Okay? That is, she's a woman who is prepared to go to whatever extent. She's not lazy. You will see that in a minute. It says, uh, she rises what? She rises when? While it is yet night. And gets spiritual food for her household. And assigns her maid what? The task. Organized. Okay. Next it says what? She considers a new field before she buys or accepts it. Thoughtful. Does her research. In it What? expanding okay accepts it expanding prudently okay and not courting neglect of her present duties by assuming other duties with her savings of what time and what strength which means that she does not give herself to wasteful activity 
she she has her priorities what right if you don't have your priorities right in, in life you waste your energy and your time and your resources and things okay next it talks about she plants what fruitful what vines in her vineyard okay next it says she girds herself with what strength amen okay what type of strength spiritual mental and physical fitness for her god-given what task and makes her arms what strong and what firm next it says what it says she tastes and sees that her gain from work with and for god is good her lamp goes not out but it burns on continually through the night of trouble privation or sorrow warning away what fear doubt and what distrust next line she lays her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff next it says she opens her hand to the poor yes she reaches out filled hands to the needy whether in body mind or spirit next line it says she fears not that this is the scripture i'm going to it says she fears not the snow for her what family for all her household are what doubly clothed in scarlet hallelujah amen the next line says it says she makes for herself coverlets cushions and rugs of tapestry industrious her clothing is of linen pure fine linen and purple such as that which the clothing of the priests and the hallowed clothes of the temple are made next line it says her husband is known in the city gates when he sits among the elders of the land okay next it says she makes the linen fine linen garments and leads others to buy them she delivers to the merchants girdles for sa or sashes that free one up what for what that free one up for what she understands labor and industry in 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 africa they call it what is it oja no 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 oja is it you know the one that you tie that you tie like this eh? oja okay thank you very much praise god at least is oja amen hallelujah <laughs> You know, okay, okay. She, you see, women who work in the market eh, and hard working, they always have that thing because they know that you know what I'm going to go in to have a a hard time. Let me let me tell you why this is important. Okay, you must train your children how to shift gear. That you know what, right now this is time for hard work. Too many of our children are lazy. They don't know left from right. Adults will be working, they will sit down on their phone, chatting away, and so on and so forth. But you know what? It's your fault as adults. Because you say, oh, they will not do I don't want to disturb them. I don't want to do whatever, and so on and so forth. Then you raise, you know what? what what's the word again? Um, hey. What is called imbeciles. who do not understand responsibility who don't understand how to tie the sash and say this is now the season and the time for us to knuckle down and get the work done if we don't train them for the palace they will end up in the gutters of life They will end up quitting whenever things get tough. In Jesus' name, we will not raise quitters. Amen. We will not raise children for the gutter. Amen. We will not raise children for the lowest places of life. The gutter means the lowest places. You know, we will raise those who will be our sculptured pillars and our cedars of Lebanon, palm trees. Where you know what? You're raising them for the king's palace. That mentality. This is where you're going. That is why I'm drilling you as I'm drilling you. Let us rise up together. Hallelujah. There is somebody I want to meet. Excuse me.
I want to meet a woman called Rachel. Let me be honest with you. I don't know so much about Leah. Okay. But I'd love to meet Rachel. Why would I want to meet Rachel and not meet Leah? Who knows why? Who knows why? Rachel raised Joseph. Are you listening? Rachel raised Joseph. Do you think Joseph would have survived if somebody had not invested in his life? Rachel raised that young man. There were only two, Benjamin and Joseph. That's all. You know, but if you study the life of Joseph, somebody did a great job with his life. Nothing happens by accident. It's not Holy Spirit. How many people have seen the Holy Spirit come to their house to come and raise their children? Have you seen angels with wings come to your house to raise your children? No. It's you. You know? But she raised that boy that even when he ended up in Potiphar's house. The quality of the home he came from was showing. And he was put in prison. The same diligence. Somebody said, I sent it out recently. It says, there's a way that you train your children. They can survive anywhere. Not only will they survive. They will not only survive, but they will what? Excel and move to the top. Because what they have on the inside of them is greater than what is around them. We preach it and we say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If your children are taken away right now from London and have to be placed in parts of the world where there's no train, where there's no washing machine, can they wash their clothes? Can they be able to scrub and clean their rooms and take care of things? But Joseph was well raised by Mama Rachel. And because of that, the prison could not contain him. He said, this boy has been raised for the palace. We're going to pray. I pray for the spirit of Rachel. You see, I, I know why I'm saying it. Because her son is a testimony. Hallelujah. Church, let's lift up our voice. We're going to begin to pray. We've heard what the word of God has, has delivered onto us. We've heard what the man of God has spoken in this time. So we're going to turn everything we've heard into prayer. We're going to seal and supplement that which we've heard. So let's just start by just lifting up your voice. Begin to acknowledge what we've heard in this time. Come on church, let's lift up our voice just for a moment. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, if you can get that Bible verse. You see, we need to be a people that not every wind begins to flow and blow us away. God came when Jesus walked this earth. He let us know that there will be many trials and tribulations that you'll, that you'll face. But he says, fear not for I have overcome the world. Fear not for I have overcome and I have the victory. So we need to be a people that we have the spirit of resilience and endurance. I love Apostle Paul. If you look through his lives and everything that he went through, constantly he begins to reveal and tell us that, listen, I've been through this thing. I went through the sacrifice, but yet, because there was somewhere I'm going, I will endure. So church, we're going to lift up our voice and we're going to pray that, Father, the grace to endure any challenge that begins to come to life, that I'll not be one who quits at the simple things. I'll not be one that when the tough comes, that I'll be to run away but church father i pray on them the grace to endure the grace to stay that is what i receive in this time right now because one thing i always teach the younger ones that as soon as you hear a message like this best believe that the devil is coming to test that which you've heard so don't be surprised if you leave this place and then you begin to go into a week and you have a harder week than you've ever been god is allowing that because he's trying to pull a resilience within you a strength that can only be grace a strength that can only be developed in a time of trial and tribulation so we're lifting up our voice that Lord, the grace to endure, the grace to persevere, grant it to me in the name of Jesus. This doesn't sound like a people who are praying. I think we'll be praying a little bit more than this. That Lord, grant me grace to endure. Or maybe you haven't gone through anything yet in life, so you don't realize that you need the strength of God. 
2 Corinthians chapter 12. You understand that you need the grace of God. Paul was writing and he began to say from verse 9. No, let's read from, from verse 8. He said, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. It says, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And then verse 9 says, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmity that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Some of you, this may sound like your, your life right now, that Lord, I've cried unto you concerning this matter. I've pleaded, I have fasted and I've prayed. I'm Taking it as a prayer point. Why is he still here? The Lord is saying that he has enabled that to be there because his grace is sufficient for you and his strength is made what? Perfect in your weakness. Meaning that when you come to a place of human weakness, you come to a place that God, I cannot do this anymore. Then the grace of God, like the wind, begins to blow in. That I will strengthen you. I will strengthen you. If you look at the book of um, Judges, I believe. Judges chapter 3 verse 1 we'll just take this then we'll, we'll round up our prayer Judges chapter 3 verse 1 it says now these are the nations which the Lord left that he might test Israel by them that is who had not known any wars in Canaan you see there are some things God will purposely and intentionally leave in your life for your strength or for your building up because if you don't pass through this you won't gain the strength and resilience is needed the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 12 that if you have run with the footmen and they have wearied you how would you do with the horsemen there are sometimes God allows the bear and the lion to come to you that you fight so that when you stand before Goliath the skills the strength and the endurance that you've used and gained in time becomes what used to fight Goliath. One more minute of saying, Lord, the grace to persevere, grant it upon me in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, that we understand that in this life we live, there will be many trials and tribulations. Your word lets us know that in everything we do, that even in these times, in these perilous times, O oh Lord, that there will be many trials, there will be many tribulations, there will be persecution that comes. But Father, we are praying for your grace that makes us perfect even in our weakness. We are praying for the staying power to endure, not to run away when things get hard, but to latch on to you like never before. Father, we pray for every single person in this room, O oh Lord, that will not be blown away by the things of the world, that will not be blown away by the things of the enemy, but Father, we will stand planted like the trees in Lebanon, that even even though the wind blows and we bend but we will not break father we give you all the glory and adoration in jesus name we have prayed amen 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 let's have a clap offering unto the lord if you believe that god has supplied you with the grace that's needed lift up a clap offering unto the lord a clap offering unto the lord that god i will stay strong the wall of jericho will keep me locked out in jesus name we have prayed Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Quickly, let's just stretch our hands to um, our man of God and just speak a word of prayer over him that even as he has come and poured out virtue on us, he has taken time. You see, when it comes to ministering the word, you must sit down with God and the Holy Spirit and endure. Take time to learn these things. And some things aren't learned by reading the Bible. Some things are learned by experiencing them. So there's some sermons that he preaches this way is because he's been there, done that. That's what qualifies him to teach. So we're stretching our hands towards him that long, even as he has poured out to us from a place of knowledge and from a place of experience, that even in his, in his tough times, that Lord, you will not be departed from him. That you will grant him a strength and a grace to endure anything that this world may have to offer. For as you did it, Lord, that may you grant that same grace unto him in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you for listening to this message. We hope that it has been a blessing to you. For counselling, prayers or to fellowship with us, visit us at RCCG ICC, rear of 31 to 35 High Road, behind Nat West Bank, Romford, Essex, RM6, 6QJ, United Kingdom.